Hey friends, it's Jess and Jericho. Welcome to our nutrition course. <laughs> so this is Intro to Nutrition, the Basics. Who this is for? Cat parents who want more than feed this cat food brand. You want to know which nutrients cats need, don't need, and how much. How to calculate energy requirements and how much to feed. How nutrients affect your cat overall, signs of deficiencies, access, and sources of nutrients, and how to formulate cat food properly. So in this section, Intro to Nutrition, we're going to cover energy, what it is, the categories of nutrients, and food as energy, water, why water is important, three types of water, and consumption. Protein, what it does in the body, the roles, and its functions. Fats, different sources, three forms of fat, functions, and essential fatty acids, EFAs. Carbohydrates, functions, sources, and answering why they aren't essential for cats. Fiber, different types of fiber, if cats can use it, and prebiotics. Digestion, each part of digestion, how it works, and what flavors cats like. And key nutrients for cats, what they need and don't need. So about this lesson, in Intro to Nutrition, we will cover the basics. This will help you understand what your cat needs and more importantly, what your cat doesn't need. This is the first lesson in my cat nutrition course, and it will establish a foundation on cat nutrition and provide you with a basic introduction. The ultimate goal with this course is to give you an understanding on how to formulate homemade cat food on your own, and we will go much more in depth on these topics in future lessons. And this is adapted from a bunch of different books and the National Research Council, AFCO, and FEDIAF. Those are the three organizations that make nutritional guidelines for pet food manufacturers to follow. And I'll work on putting this video along with the slides and resources into an organized course. So check the description for details. What is energy? The ultimate source of energy is the sun. Plants produce energy containing nutrients through photosynthesis. Animals eat plants or they eat other animals that have eaten plants. Then these nutrients are digested, absorbed, and transported to body cells to generate energy. Meeting daily energy needs is crucial for the performance of the body's metabolic work and the energy density of the food determines the quantity of food that is eaten each day. This also affects the amount of all nutrients that an animal eats. Animals eating an energy-dense food will consume less of the food. However, the concentration of other critical nutrients should be higher to ensure sufficient intake. The opposite is true in that animals eating low energy dense foods consume more. So other nutrients may need to be decreased to avoid excess or toxic levels. This is exactly why when people say, how much do I feed my cat? There are a lot of different variables, the type of food, what your cat's needs are, the energy from the food, etc. So on the right, we have this cute little sun producing solar energy. The plants absorb it, turn it into nutrients, energy containing nutrients, and then the mouse eats the plants. And energy nutrients from plants are digested, absorbed, and transported to the cells. Then this cute cat eats the mouse. Nutrients from the mouse are pulled apart completely and rebuilt into new proteins, into new cat proteins. So what is energy? Food is energy. Food can be solid or liquid and provides energy, materials, and substances required by the body to perform well and maintain a healthy status. These six categories of nutrients are water, protein, fat, carbohydrate, vitamins, and minerals. Energy, food provides energy-giving materials that help the body produce movement, heat, or other forms of energy. Materials. Food provides materials that are necessary for growth, repair, or reproduction. And substances. Food also provides substances that may be necessary to initiate or regulate the processes involved in the previous two categories. Nutrients. We have water. It's the single most important nutrient for the body. It aids in digestion, regulating body temperature, transporting nutrients, and it provides shape to the body. Protein. The basic units of proteins are amino acids. Protein functions throughout the body as major structural components of hair, skin, nails, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. Fat. 
provides a source of immediate and stored energy. It also protects the skin, vital organs, and membranes surrounding the intestines. Carbohydrates, they are the major energy-containing constituents of plants. They are not required for cats because cats can maintain blood sugar levels by making glucose from amino acids. Vitamins, they are necessary in small amounts and function as essential enzymes to make enzymes or to work with enzymes in metabolic processes. And minerals are necessary for the body's metabolic processes as well. Water, water is essential for life. Facts, and is considered the most important nutrient. Our bodies are made up of mostly water, ranging around 70%. A loss of as little as 10% can cause serious illness, and a loss of 15% would be fatal without immediate treatment. So again, water is essential for life. There are three sources of water for animals. First, we have water in food. Whole prey are between 70 to 80% moisture. Fresh and wet food diets contain about the same range. Dry food is only about 10% moisture. Metabolic water is produced during metabolism or the breakdown of energy-containing nutrients in the body. Then there's drinking water, but cats have evolved from the desert and naturally have a lower thirst drive. So if you're here, you probably already know this, a fresh, high moisture diet is best. Look at Jericho. <laughs> Drinking water needs may be increased in hotter temperatures. So maybe in the summer, you notice your cat drinks more water with increased exercise or increased energy intake. So more food would require more water, physiological state, and the type of diet. And there's Jericho. He loves to catch some sun in the morning by the window. And that's his signature plop. I'm pooped when he's done playing. Protein. Proteins are essential for the body because they are principal structure components of the body, including the organs and tissues. This includes collagen, muscle, hair, nails, blood proteins, and more. There is a constant turnover of protein because it's broken down and resynthesized continuously but the body can synthesize new proteins from amino acids when necessary amino acids are available to the tissue cells. So the basic units of proteins are amino acids. Cats cannot synthesize essential amino acids and therefore the diet must provide these. But cats can synthesize non-essential amino acids with a proper diet. For the immune system, the antibodies that maintain the body's resistance to disease are all composed of large protein molecules. Plus, proteins found in the blood act as carrier substances. For example, hemoglobin carries oxygen to tissues. Then we have nitrogen. Dietary protein is the cat's principal source of nitrogen. And nitrogen is essential for the synthesis of the 11 non-essential amino acids. Cats can make 12 amino acids when adequate sources of nitrogen are in the diet. Important roles of protein. First, protein is necessary during growth for building tissues. Second, growth, pregnancy, and lactation all require protein, and a deficiency in protein can lead to poor growth, weight loss, emaciation, and anorexia. Third, wounds and damaged tissues rely on protein to heal properly, and a deficiency in protein can lead to muscle wasting, increased susceptibility to disease, and even death. And fourth, the cat's coat is primarily protein. Therefore, a protein deficiency can also lead to rough and dull hair coats. Fat. <laughs> That's how I feel when I work out. Just drop it and I'm done. Fat is important in the diet because it provides a very concentrated, easily digested source of energy. Essential fatty acids are necessary to absorb the fat-soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K. The accumulation of fat protects the skin, vital organs, and membranes surrounding the intestines. Fats also act as an insulator and provides energy in times of need and storage in times of excess. Additionally, fat increases the caloric density and the palatability in 
food, triglycerides. The two forms of fats are saturated and unsaturated. They are mostly made up of lipids. Simple lipids include triglycerides, which are the most common and most important type of fat in the diet. Triglycerides can be saturated, monounsaturated, or polyunsaturated. Essential fatty acids, these EFAs, they are certain long chain fatty acids and are required in the diet because cats cannot synthesize these fats. These are called essential fatty acids. So when you see essential, that means it must be provided in the diet, like essential amino acids. Examples include linoleic, alpha linolenic, gamma linolenic, and arachidonic. APA and DHA are also listed as probably in these books. Plant versus animal. Sources of fats include dairy, meat, fish, seed oils, and nuts. Animal fats contain a higher percentage of saturated fatty acids. Plant oils contain 80 to 90% unsaturated fat, except for palm, olive, and coconut. And animal fats contain 50 to 60% unsaturated fat. Carbohydrates. Can eat carbs, don't eat carbs, don't eat carbs. Carbohydrates are the main energy containing constituent of plants. They include simple sugars, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. Glucose is an important energy source for many tissues. A constant supply is necessary for the proper functioning of the central nervous system. The central nervous system and erythrocytes require glucose for energy needs. Glycogen is the storage form of glucose excess. It is found in the liver and muscles and helps maintain normal glucose homeostasis in the body. However, carbohydrates are not essential to cats because they can maintain blood sugar levels by making glucose in the body from amino acids. The protein hormones, insulin and glucagon are two examples. Fiber. What is fiber? Fiber is the edible part of plants, which are mostly carbohydrates. The main sources are fruits and gums. These fibers either have complete or partial fermentation in the large intestine. So we have soluble fibers. They can hold water and typically make poops softer. Most are moderately or highly fermentable in the large intestine. They affect GI functions like stomach emptying time and transit time. Then we have insoluble fibers, which do not absorb water and do not make feces soft. They are typically included to increase bulk, and they are generally much less fermentable. Short-chain fatty acids, certain types of fiber are broken down in the large intestine and create short-chain fatty acids. However, cats cannot get a significant energy source from this because of the short and simple structure of their large intestine. Prebiotics. Certain fermentable fibers act as prebiotics. They provide benefits by creating a specific bacteria in the GI flora. This is helpful for health and well-being, even though the cat does not directly digest it. Again, we'll go further into these topics, but a simple way to think about it is probiotics are the healthy bugs in the gut. Prebiotics feed the bugs. Vitamins. What are vitamins? Vitamins are organic compounds different from fat, protein, and carbohydrate in that they are not used as an energy source or as structural components. They are essential in minute amounts and are classified as fat-soluble and water-soluble. Functions of vitamins. Vitamins are involved in enzymatic reactions and play a significant role in DNA synthesis, energy release, bone development, normal eye function, cell membrane integrity, blood clotting, free radical scavenging, protein metabolism, and nerve impulse transaction. Involved in a lot, but required in minute amounts. Very, very interesting. Fat-soluble vitamins include A, D, E, and K, and vitamins A and D have the most potential for toxicity. And I included a slab of salmon on this slide because it's very high in vitamin D. Water-soluble vitamins include C and members of the B complex. And choline is also lumped into this category even though it's technically not a vitamin. Minerals, what are minerals? Minerals are inorganic elements in food that are necessary for the body's metabolic processes. Macro minerals account for most of the body's mineral content, and micro minerals are trace elements that are present in smaller amounts. Macro big, micro small. Function of minerals. Minerals are structural components of body organs and tissues, constituents of body fluids and tissues, and catalysts and cofactors in enzyme and hormone systems. 
So we have electrolytes kind of included in this category. We have chloride, potassium, and sodium. And types of minerals, we have the macro minerals, which are calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, sulfur, and the electrolytes. And the micro minerals include cobalt, copper, iodine, manganese, selenium, and zinc. Digestion. Digestion starts in the mouth with chewing. This is mechanical digestion. So food is mixed with saliva and that helps the cat swallow the food. They chomp, chomp, and then down the hatch. They mostly swallow their food whole. So the saliva helps them get it down to where it needs to be. Chemical digestion involves splitting the chemical bonds of complex nutrients through enzymatic processes. Complex carbs are broken down into simple sugars. Protein molecules are hydrolyzed to single amino acids and some dipeptides. And most fat is hydrolyzed to free fatty acids and some monoglycerides and diglycerides. Taste receptors are at the tip of each taste bud. Cats are more sensitive to and prefer amino acids and many bitter flavors aka a carnivore. Cat requirements. So ca cats are classified as carnivores because their natural feeding behaviors do not match an omnivorous diet. Additionally, they have a unique requirement for specific nutrients only found in meat. Fascinating. Nutritional management of proper diet is an important and necessary step in both preventive health and treatment. There's a lot that we can do with food. We are what we eat. Protein. Cats have a unique requirement for higher protein. They cannot synthesize certain amino acids, essential amino acids like taurine, methionine, arginine, cysteine, and more. Additionally, dietary arachidonic acid is important for cats. For the vitamins, cats require the preformed vitamin A, which is found in meat, but not plants. Plants provide beta carotene. Cats cannot convert beta carotene to the preformed version. They also require dietary vitamin D since they cannot synthesize it through their skin like we can because they have fur. Low plant protein. Cats have a low plant protein tolerance and limited fructose utilization. Fructose is a sugar. Anything with OSE is a sugar. Up next, <laughs> cute little cat. We will dive much deeper into each nutrient in the next lessons. Please post your questions in the comments so I can gather FAQ and answer in future lessons or just make an entire FAQ video. Some things to prepare for now. Transition your cat to wet or raw if he's not already eating this food. Some cats can take months to adjust to a fresh food diet. So transitioning now will make going to homemade much easier. All transition plan options are included in the description at my website, catacles.com. There's text, video, course layout that's organized and also an ebook. So the option that you choose is just entirely dependent on how you like to learn. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.